On this episode, Talk TV crew meets with a Nigerian woman who left a thriving career in the banking industry to pursue her passion. Welcome, successful interior decorator and space management expert, Glory Omorege. Interior decorator, space management expert, Glory Omorege. Thank you for joining us on the program today. My pleasure. Now, you've been doing this as a side hobby in your undergraduate days. At what point after graduation did you realize that this could actually be a successful business venture? Actually, I realized it was going to be a business adventure while I was in 300 level. Oh, I started really? in 100 level and then I got my first um, mini showroom when I was in 300 level. Oh, you actually had a showroom as yes. an undergraduate? Yes. That's interesting. So, I... I knew I was going to make money from the beginning. And so you were someone one could describe as a student entrepreneur. Exactly. <laughs> wow, wow, way back. You've been thinking ahead and doing this wonderful thing. But did you undergo any kind of formal training? Well, initially I did not. I was just um, reading up, um, did a lot of research on the internet and then books and, you know, so that was just it until I had started and then I started taking courses online and all that and developing myself and that's, that's it. What instigated your interest in this industry as it were? Well, I actually started um, by default. Oh. Okay. Tell I, us that story. <laughs> I'm interested. I've always been a restless person. I don't want to sit and not do anything. And then at the time, <clears throat> and then I think I just love making money. Oh. <laughs> so I remember then I was um, I just got into the uni and then there was a friend of ours that we we were in the choir together we sing together and then his wife started making bed sheets for sale and then told me about it and said okay my wife wants people who can help us to sell she was making bed sheets and men's shirts so I started collecting from her then make um, some money and then return her money and I started like that and I just realized ah, I kind of like the bed sheet thingy part um, more than the others so I concentrated on the bed, bed sheet and after some time I asked her if she could do other things maybe duvet throw pillows but because she was a tailor she didn't um, kind of have time so I'll place order and she won't be able to make uh, meet it and then um, I realized that I could get some stores around myself so I started going to a lesson lawyer and then I get some stuff. You actually were going to into the markets. Yeah, and then it was actually there I got a lot of training from those guys. They told me about um, from the traders in the market. Yeah, measurement, for instance, told me about okay. What I did is I go on the internet, research, and then ask them questions. So that was just how I started. Yeah. Did you make any mistakes along the line? A lot of mistakes. For me, I don't dwell on my mistakes at all. I don't even think about mistakes. When it happens, I don't think about it really. I just, okay, this has happened. What can we make of this immediately? And it's the same approach to my work. Even if I'm doing your work, work and I make a mistake, you might not even notice. Because immediately I find something else. It comes out into something totally different and then that might even be the high point of the job eventually. Oh, really? So mistake to me is nothing. So in, in creativity, mistakes are part of the creative process. Yeah, creativity is, um, you, you know, you're just trying out things yeah. and then you come up with something. Do you understand? Isn't it, isn't it like, take us through the creative process. I mean, if you were servicing a client, um, isn't it as if you would conceive an idea in your head first? and then before you translate it into physical reality. Yeah, that's what happens. When you, okay, when we enter a space, you first of all take in the space. For me, that's why most of my job, not even most, all my jobs are not the same. Because I work um, with personality, I work with space, I work with the people who live there, I work with a lot of things, you know, functionality of the space and all of that. So at the end of the day, I can't do two spaces alike. Mm, because understand? no two so, personalities are the same. The thing is, sometimes, okay, I, it, sometimes it takes me time, but right now I'm trying to work on it because we also need to be fast, as in decision making needs to be faster than it was before. Because before, I might get to a space, if I'm not inspired, I'll tell them to give me time. I remember one time I was to do a photo studio 
and then well I had some emotional stuff then and then I wasn't concentrating I couldn't get and the guy insisted I was gonna do it I told him I, I didn't want to do it at that time that your creative muse wasn't yes active. so but he said he was gonna wait and he waited like two weeks by the time I got there after two weeks I was a lot better and then I could think and he said it was worth it that we waited for you so so for you, you take into consideration the personality of the person involved, exactly. the functionality of the yeah. space, what it was going to be used for. Yeah, and then for what us, are the other variables you take into consideration? Okay, um, like in home craft, we we usually consider safety, health, and environment. We have to okay, like I'm doing a space now. And there are children in the house. I have to okay find out how old the cho the kids are. There are elderly people in the house, so it helps me to pick my design. For instance, I want to do a table. I won't, unless they insist, in a house that has kids, I won't use glass tables. So, all those kind of things, and oh, maybe you're making beds for kids, and you're making sharp edge, you know, they will run around, yeah. or for adults, you know, a lot of consideration. Yeah. And then the environment, okay, like, um, it depends on uh, it depends like the sp it depends on the space. You are in a space, and then you know that um, maybe, for instance, it's a dusty area, yeah. and then you want to use you are insisting on using a white curtain or a neutral curtain. You know, all those things. You just have to put everything together. That's what makes a complete. So work. it's really a scientific process. Yeah, not kind just, of. Not just artwork yeah. at play here now. Yeah. That's quite insightful. But uh, tell us your entrepreneurial journey uh, from. The moment you graduated, we know that okay, you were a student entrepreneur, okay. and then um, at that time you knew you this was uh, this is what you were always going to do. Okay, I was like seventy percent sure then, but because I had um, I I kind of like the corporate world and I wanted to work, you know, I really wanted to work. So for me, it was just like a pastime. Yeah, that okay after this I was going to take up uh, um, a, a job. Where I can wear my mini skirt, <laughs> you know. But eventually, after my father's death, and then I thought of it, the fastest thing that can make me money, the kind of money I needed at that time, was this job. If I was going to get a job, I wasn't going to be paid as much as the needs that I had then, you know. So, and I knew that if I stayed with this, in a few, as in the, the few time I've um, started before my father's death. I've been able to do a lot, I've been able to save a lot of money and then I felt this is it I, and I can take this further and make it better. So that was just, I just cancelled work and said I'm going to face this and do it and make it better. So, so how did you start in terms of uh, breaking into the big uh, league? Okay, um, my start is always very funny. Because I remember the first time I was going to get even the showroom. Okay, there was a guy that makes um, stores for me, and then I went there. I was expecting him to have done um, the job, and he didn't finish on time. And I kept saying, ah, "What's wrong with you?" I went the following time, and the following day he didn't finish. And then at a point, I just got that. I just got to feel that this guy is um, maybe is getting is getting too familiar or something. And I just said, you know what, bring all my stuffs. I don't want to do this again. What gave you the courage to take that kind of bold decision? I mean, a lot of people would not do that. They would want to test the waters and measure the market before they take such a bold, courageous decision as selling their most vital assets. <laughs> I'm a natural risk, uh, risk taker. I, can't, I don't think, if I think too much, I won't do it. Oh, really? So, I like what I think it, I want to do it immediately. If you give me too much time, I might not do it. So for me, when I thought of it, that the only thing I have to do right now is sell my car. I do want to think of, ah, okay, babe, they will say, ah, what happened? You are now trekking. If I give you too much thought, I won't do it. I just did it. So, <laughs> so, so you just took the bull by the horn. So, and I was paying off, I really must uh, say that. And I thank God because I have wonderful friends and families who believe in me. I have a, I have a friend, if not even all my friends. You know, there's something no. I'm taking away from what you just said now. I mean, when people want to start business, a lot of people focus on the capital they need to start. Yeah. But something you just said now, which is an, which is insightful for me, 
is the concept of social capital. Your yeah. social network is part of the capital that can help you to launch out. Yeah, um, when I started, maybe until like um, five years after I started, that was when I started getting a lot of people outside. All my circle of influence were my customers, even my dad, you know? Everybody, all my friends, all my members, even my VC in school, everybody, everybody around me, they were my first customers. And at the end of the day, they were the ones that projected me, they talked, um, spoke to people about it's me. It's like dropping a stone in a, in, exactly. a, in a pond of water so, and it ripples out. Exactly. So my friends are the ones that sell me the most. Until today, they still sell me. So uh, that's um, something very but, good. But, but, but I can imagine someone listening to us out there at home and thinking to themselves, your circle is limited. And if you want to expand your business exponentially the way I think you want to, uh, you can't just rely solely on your circle. What are the other variables that you consider when okay, you're right planning now, your marketing? Social media is an in thing. Yep. And then we're really... Um, Working on that also, we're, on, we're almost on all the um, social media panel, panel platforms, platforms, and then um, that, and then our website. Yeah. I'm trying to start a blog. I'm trying to create more time so that I can focus on the blog and that. And that's it. Do you have consultants that you use to? drive your business marketing consultant yeah, brand consultant okay i okay we used to have it's just the same thing as in the same circle in nigeria um human capital yeah you know people are not ready to the thing is this vibe that's got everybody that everybody wants to be an entrepreneur i appreciate that but there are some people that will still work some people are called to support some people are called it's not everybody that is called to business some people are called to support some and they would be a very good support but everybody wants to start something mushroom things all around it's as if i don't encourage it but you know sometimes and then there's always and there's also time for everything yeah. everything sometimes it's not even your time maybe you need to serve but the thing the, the in thing right now people don't want to serve they want to just start oh i know how to do makeup i'm gonna open a studio sometimes you might need to just work for somebody yeah. so coming up how do we develop intuition? Can you share us insight into that? I just want to digress a little bit okay. because it's very important. <laughs> if you read Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich, which is a book that I would recommend to anyone who wants to succeed in any venture, especially business, it talks lengthily about this sixth sense, this intuition. Now, you'd like to share with us how you source for, because I realize entering your showroom, I see a lot of, uh, in fact, virtually everything I've seen here, and I'm not patronizing you when I say this, virtually everything I've seen here is unique in its own right. Thank and you. Um, it just tells me this is someone who painstakingly um, creates and painstakingly searches for products. Now tell us, if you can, uh, how you source for the products that you recommend to your clients and the ones that you display in your showroom. Okay, I, for me, I source from everywhere. <laughs> You'll be shocked, I source from everywhere and then even... That's the Richard Branson strategy <laughs> you're giving us again. When you say everywhere, can you be a little bit more specific? Seriously, I can shop, I can shop from Sabo. Sabo, can you anyway, uh, because the thing is, is just, I'm just looking for that unique thing. Okay, like artists bring their work and then they say, okay, we should help them sell and all that. I still, I don't take all jobs. I still have to look at it. Does this thing speak our brand? Does it, you know? So, so you have a checklist. Yeah. That's, that that it's, decides it's not... <laughs> for you what you pick. Exactly. And even if, um, even if it's, even if I'm not around, my people understand. They will know. Ah, you strike me as someone who will not shop on the internet. Mm, it's very difficult for me, but I'm trying to really work on it now, and it's getting better because I understand dimensions. Because I've seen people who shop on the internet, and then they'll <laughs> say, "Ah, I expected this thing to be big, and it came out small." Yeah. 
But me, I understand dimension, I, I measurement, I understand um, if it's written in centimeter, so I can say, okay, this is how big this thing is, mm. unless it now comes and then it's not like that. So right now, I'm beginning to shop on, in, on the internet as well. So I just shop around. <laughs> yeah, shop around. And I, I also need to also ask you, I mean, when you say shop around, uh, someone for someone out there because this program is also about inspiring people to take up the um, the challenge of starting their own enterprise um, and we also want to educate them and give them information that can be useful for them uh, if you were to counsel a startup someone who is just starting up uh, where would you ask them to go to look for products that can um, help them to speak their brand and be consistent Okay, um, for it depends on aspect. You know, I do interiors and project finishing. So for interiors, which is the most common thing, for soft furnishing, you okay, you get stuffs in Lagos. If you are in Nigeria, you can get stuffs in Lagos. Where do I go? Like in, Lagos? in Tejo Show, you can get stuffs in um, what's this market called? For carrying? No, um, Alaba. Alaba. Like maybe for lightings. Um, some furniture and um, you can get stuff at um, Alaba, then Trade Center, then, Trade then Center Ipori. 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 That's another place. Costain. Yes. So that's another place. That's in Lagos. Ibadan. No, I, don't, I don't know. Soft furniture, maybe a lesson lawyer market. That's the only market that we have. and. Well, you can get some stuff from there. What about, what about Nisha? What I don't go course? that far because, you know, our roads, I don't, I don't go You're that risk far. You're risk-taking, no risk that level. No, it's not like that. Because the thing is, I look at the distance, time. Okay, the time. Time is very important to me. I don't want to sit for hours because I, because, like, I'm in Ibado. There's no flights from here to, oh, Nisha. you know, so. I have to first of all get to Lagos. It's more tedious. Yeah, I just, get you. So I feel that's you. just it. I Time is you. very important. I feel you. Now let's talk about cash flow because that's very crucial to business. How do you manage your cash flow? How do you handle finance? Okay. Funnily, I'm. <laughs> um, I studied economics in school, and then uh, the last time I can remember, I was the best student in accounting. Oh really? <laughs> <laughs> but yes, you know, sometimes it doesn't play down to the physical thing. You know, initially we had a, we had a issue with um, managing our books and all that. And then I had to, for me, if I have problem in any area of my business, I look for somebody who is good and I talk to them mm. and get insight and all of that. When I had issue with my So you don't believe and, you know it all. You look for oh, those no, no, who no, have no, competences no, 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 no. in areas where you feel deficient. Uh, you have and, to, and you, you, you can't be, service. this is a creative business. If you want to do everything, you want to do master of everything, you might, um, you just run yourself dry. Because you want to do this, you want to do this, you want to do this. You might not be able to handle it together. And at the end of the day, you, you can't create, you can't think, you can't spend time to come up with something good. And so, like someone says, you're as good as your team. I think Richard Branson also said that in one of his books, <laughs> that your business is as successful as exactly. the team. Exactly. The team support behind it. Yeah, so it's not something that you can do all alone. So, so you hire consultants yeah, to so, do your... Well, um, I, like I still say, friends and family, <laughs> okay. I leverage on the relationship around me. If I need anything right now, first of all, look at my circle of influence. Who are the people that I know that are into this thing? How can they be of help? Eventually, it might not be free, but at least, you know, I believe in making money. <laughs> Let it circulate around, within. Circulating within, you know. I first of all, look around. Who do I know that does this thing? I would rather want my money to go there. Do you understand? So I, I look around and once I have somebody in my circle of influence, I just call the person up and then I spend time. They know me for that. I might just be gone. For I remember when we're dealing with finance and all that, we're dealing with finance, savings and all of that. I have people I spoke with, my mentors. I just, I spent, I just went away, spoke with them, spent time. So before you take a decision, before you make a decision to hire someone or to get someone to handle your finance or any other aspect of your business, you first of all engage with them. 
Yeah. That's what you're saying. Yeah, exactly. Specifically, what are the kind of questions you'll be asking them? What are the things you'll be looking out for before you get the conviction that this is the person? Okay, for me... Because um, I assume you will have a myriad of options. For yeah, every... for me, another thing I try to do is that um, I always look for simplicity in everything. If you make something too difficult, at the end of the day, you might not get um, people to be committed to it. I want everything to be done in the best friendly way. Do you understand? So, even accounting, I had to, I had to speak with someone. I said, okay, right, how can we make this thing interesting? So that, you know how it is a uh, um, bookkeeping of olden days mm -hmm. that you have to you know um i bought them below five naira. you know i had to speak with somebody how and then tax tax was a major problem mm. because i didn't know how to Prepare you know, the tax you know. Books. so and they helped me out and it was easy number one he gave he made it so simple that bookkeeping is not it's, uh, it's not skyrocket. He made it so simple and then told me the things I needed to do, um, got somebody to handle my tax and all of that. And right now, books are so easy. Mm. And then it's even easy for us to calculate profits, calculate our savings and all of that. So that's it. I just look for the simpler ways to do everything. So, so I understand you now that you, areas where you need people to handle for you, maybe consultants or experts, you still don't just leave it to them. You go out of your way to yeah. try to understand to some degrees what they're doing and perhaps maybe even acquire some knowledge and skills along that line. Yeah, because it's my business. It's not theirs. I, I know how it runs. I understand it. And then, okay, for instance, I, the person I spoke with um, does um, HMO and um, other businesses. It's different yeah. from what I do. So I must be able to apply it to what I do. Do you understand? So that's why I, li I like talking with them and then spending time and then for me myself to understand it. Once I understand it, I can pass it to others. So I don't want to be a novice in all aspects of my business, okay. even though I'm not doing everything, but yet I know what's going on. So how do you handle, how do you hire personnel? whether for part-time or full-time what are the things you look out for what's take us through the process of hiring okay um for hiring i okay we we send out um what's it called flyers not flyers okay we put on social media advertise tell friends broadcast and all of that and then when people submit their cv we do the interview but when i'm when i'm looking for people i'm not looking for I have first class in some this. <laughs> That's the contrarian in you. At because work now. it doesn't work, as far as I'm concerned. We've taken a lot of very, as in all the first class academically people, academically brilliant exactly, people. and then it's just all books, and they cannot translate. T gets, and then you. So get, for you, the grade is not so important. It's not so important. It's the person. So that's why I like meeting. Uh, the people I want to employ. Okay, like um, recently we were trying to employ site supervisors and then, you know, I kept collecting the CVs and then my, for me, it starts from the CV. Once I go through your CV, your write-ups or when you talk to me on the phone and sometimes I specifically tell people to call me because I want to, I just want to get something from you. I remember somebody calling me and then kept doing sa 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 for me. I said, it shows that you're not smart because you spoke to me, you should know that this is a lady. And then you continued sa sa. Okay, shall I come sir? I said, okay. You know, from that, I mean, I've interviewed you. Mm. Don't even bother to come. Mm. You know, so that's I like meeting people. So at the end so of when, the day- So when you go through the CV, what are the things you look out for? You know, funny, like, don't even look at, um, I don't look at what you got from school, oh. I just, number one, look at, okay. I look at um, the budgeter, your age, the and all of that. The history of your life, where you're coming <laughs> from. And then I... Where you've been. Uh, and then I check, um, okay, maybe your work experience, places you've been. I like it when, peop when um, people write CVs more. 
like um okay like i was writing cv for my sister and i said tell them even things that are not necessarily work like she belongs to some groups like red like cross like some volunteer yeah, work yeah because that might just be it for for you i remember mm. a friend of mine that worked with me she just came to work with me for some time because she was idle and then she wanted to do something and then when she, she went for this job interview and she just wrote um volunteering at home craft and that was what got her the job that's quite insightful so, so uh, some of these community work um, so it's part of your cv because you're doing something centers. and then i look at another thing interesting thing that i look at is that i look at the time you finished school okay. and then to the time you do the next job so i wonder what have you been doing in the, the space gaps. of you know in that gap what were you doing so you must be able to fill it in for me i don't want to see empty space so because it tells me that um, maybe you need this job now because you are broke or you need um, a quick fix you know so <laughs> It's, so for you, is the person behind the degrees, the, person, the certificates, the person. and the journey of the person? It's where the person. Is being, what he wasn't done. the most intelligent. It wasn't even Among that the uh, average at all. He was, <laughs> but yet, he's smart. Yeah. You know, you can be smart. Professors. You know, so that's it. Now, when you meet the person eventually, I mean, you haven't gone through the CV and you've zeroed in on a number of applicants. Um, when you eventually meet the applicants in person what are the things you look out for see um i'm really gifted with intuition <laughs> my intuition is very strong i was thinking like that as we were talking about the phone conversation that are you internally directed Do you rely more on your sixth sense yeah than I, your brain yes because i just um i almost can't tell you know, I don't know, it's, it might be a gift, which I'm grateful. Yeah, everybody has intuitive gifts, actually. <laughs> it's just that we don't use it. Yeah, if you don't um, develop, if you don't, don't use it after some time, it will just leave you. Everybody is as one. Yeah, it's so, just that it's dormant in many people's own. So I have learned to really develop mine and it has really helped me. Even we work, even we work. So I almost can tell. So once I start talking to you and then when well, you're lying, I can tell. Why? <laughs> so you rely on your internal antenna. <laughs> exactly, because I've read autobiographies of many successful billionaires around the world, and I, I can tell you that uh, about nine something percent of them actually mention this intuition thing as wow. part of their <laughs> strategy, part of their hidden secrets. They rely more; they are internally directed. Uh, nine something percent of the ones whose autobiographical writings I've read. So I think it's one thing that some of our viewers need to take away from, from here. How do we develop intuition? Can you share us insight into that? I just want to digress a little bit okay. because it's very important. <laughs> if you read Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich, which is a book that I would recommend to anyone who wants to succeed in any venture, especially business, it, it talks lengthily about this sixth sense, this intuition, about the need for people to see it as their library, their nature's library that he has gifted to them. How do you develop? What strategies, what kind of uh, suggestions or advice can you give to anyone who wants to venture to develop their own intuitive skills, as it were, or minds? Okay, intuition, the way you can develop, intuition is like um, you having a friend that talks to you, and then it tells you something the first time you don't do it the second time you don't do it and it keeps saying after some time you just shut up and say if i tell him he won't do it so intuition if you the way you develop it is to use it and how do you use it once you feel something when you feel you know this is how we usually put it in nigeria i feel somehow you know if you feel that somehow you. you know with something sometimes take a restraint and just um take a restraint and check it if you do it like that the voice becomes clearer the more you listen the, the the more it becomes clearer and then you begin to say it but if you if he speaks the first time and you don't do it second time you, you ignore would, it you, yeah if by the time you start ignoring it after some time you just because at the time i actually lost it i actually lost it coming up so you and i know that being an entrepreneur um, the skills you need to succeed as an entrepreneur is just one side technical skills. Yeah. Uh, you need managerial skills, people skills, uh, communication, emotional intelligence, and what have you. Uh, how do you develop yourself in these other areas that are needed to succeed as an entrepreneur?
what is it? what your intuition tells you doesn't make sense it's not rational sometimes it doesn't make sense okay but even when it doesn't make sense you should just try and obey yeah, yeah. as it were because sometimes then uh, the things that really work doesn't make sense initially and then you just look at it like um will people accept this thing for me i i would satisfy myself first before i think about another person uh, even the bible says um, love yourself love your neighbor as, as yourself. yourself so i would i would please myself first before i listen to any other person so if my intuition tells me to do something and you are telling me especially now uh, because i've been beaten once i would rather even if it doesn't make sense I would rather just do it. Because your intuition is you. Yes, so I would rather just do it. I've done a lot at the site. And my guys were like, hey, this thing, ha, ah, this thing is not done like this. So <laughs> this is how we used to do this thing. And I'll tell them, this is just what I want. Mm. I would insist. And by the time we finish, everybody will be, ah, yeah, you actually said so. Ah, this thing is not really nice. So, ah, auntie is gifted. But, you know. That's right. It sometimes it doesn't initially it doesn't make sense most of the time. Now you've told us how you develop yourself in terms of the technicalities of this job, but you and I know that being an entrepreneur, um, the skills you need to succeed as an entrepreneur is just one side technical skills. Yeah. Uh, you need managerial skills, people skills, uh, communication, emotional intelligence, and what have you. Uh, how do you develop yourself in these other areas that are needed to succeed as an entrepreneur? You okay. go for training courses, training programs, you go for, uh, you go to enroll for courses or you just sit under some mentor or someone you trust? I do almost everything. Well, tell us in specific terms <laughs> I, what you do to educate yourself. I read, yourself. I have mentors, I go for trainings, and um, I go for seminars, I listen to people, and then for me, okay, like um, reading, like um, what one of my mentors told me, he said, most of the time during the day you're working on others, but when you are alone in your, in your bedroom or in your space, that is the time you need to work on yourself, hmm. and how do you work on yourself? You have to read, you have to, you know, reading is, um, reading is a gateway to, <laughs> I don't know how to put it. If you read, it's like in another world. It transports you. It transports you to another world. You begin to see, you don't see things the way every other person sees things. Because you, you've experienced one world that they have not experienced. Mm. Like, okay, my... My mentor told me that um, you, when you sleep as an okay, we should try at least wake up by four o'clock. And then four o'clock, what do you do? You read, you, for um, religious people, you pray, read. Meditate. Meditate, write your affirmations, do your affirmations. By the time you do all of that, you are ready for the day and you've equipped yourself. And then the day, you're just to give out all those things. Like, there's one saying that he usually says, um, Dr. Abibo Lamto, he will say that, um, that when others are sleeping, you are determining their day. Oh dear, that's deep. <laughs> you know, at 4 a.m. I'm awake, I'm determining your day, and you're still snoring on your bed. So, that's what um, achievers, that's what they do. So, I've done my to-do list for the day, I've um, read, I have um, done meditation, I have done my affirmation and all of that. And I just come out and we wait, we go out together. You think we are the same. We are not. Oh dear. We are not, <laughs> oh dear. We are not on the same platform. So you 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 during the day you let out yeah. what you have equipped yourself with. Exactly. And then you come back home to re equip yourself again. Exactly. So that re equipping is very necessary for success for sustainability and success yeah if that's I what get keeps you abreast and then it also helps you you know what you know because I, you know when i started this business yeah. eh, the knowledge i was using then i'm not i'm no longer there i remember i used to have a, I have a mentor when i started this business and then he was an architect and he had this lovely place his use of space was wonderful it was you know I, I used to really look forward to anytime i get to the office i quickly go to his office and peep 
and then I keep listening to him. He, my first up is I remember he did it, you know. But right now, we met at a site one time, and then his job was cancelled, and then they asked me to pick up the job. For me, it was a humbling experience mm. because it could have been me. What happened was that he stayed at that point. You know, there's a there's a there's a and way you time, can. And then times passed him. Exactly. And then right now, I keep telling young people, I keep telling my friends, I keep telling everybody around, the way time is moving, you can't even you can't sit, you can't rest, you just have to keep walking. Supersonic you, speed. Because if you're not careful, you'll be left out, and it okay. will be too fast. That so, time you realize. if you have um, an idea right now, you're working on it and you think, oh, this is a wonderful idea. It's a multi-million idea. I have to do this. I have to do that. If you keep, if you stay there, somebody will come and take it from you and take it further than your mind can even so carry. So you've got to keep moving. You've got, you've got to keep going. Exactly. Now, uh, what training course did you uh, participate in okay. over the last five years especially? I've been to a lot. Number one, I'm in a training church. I attend the Bridge Network and like every morning, every morning, every Sunday morning, we have um, what we call um, the Real Success Seminar. It's a business, it's a business um, seminar. So every Sunday, Is it open I keep, to non-members of yeah, the church? Yeah, it's open to everybody. It's open to non-members. Okay. It's every, every Sunday, I know that I'm going to get something. That's basic. And then, apart from that, my pastor is very accessible. So, I have, um, I have like a life, <laughs> a life coach, a life coach, and a business coach. Really and you know, so any, I can just call him, pastor. Something, something happened. That, what do you think? Okay, come to my office. Or if it's something I can send. Okay, let me send you a book. Let me send you a video. Let me send you something. And then, apart from that, I gave, go for training as well. And then I went. I was in um, EDC, Pan Atlantic University, okay. the Lagos Business School. Yes to do um, um, certificate in entrepreneurship management. Isn't it expensive? And, well, I won a scholarship. And so it was, I had to, I, eventually I just paid um, peanuts. <laughs> not not, not peanuts, peanut I, like I that, know. When you said peanuts, I just business <laughs> But it's, it's quite an investment that was worth your yes, while. Yes, yes. Let's talk about inventorizing. I mean, because you have a lot of products that you stock. Your warehouse is full, your, your, your outlet is filled with different kinds of products that you can't remember, I mean, in a whiff. How do you plan your inventory? How do you remember every single item that goes in into your warehouse and your store and goes out? Considering that you're a very busy person, how do you, how do you plan your inventory? I, I think God has blessed me. <laughs> I remember everything that is here and in my warehouse. I, maybe because right now I'm still the one that shops for everything. I, I won't miss it when I tell you I have five of the items. Because I keep, okay, even when I'm not here in the showroom, I go through what they've sold and then I know, okay, two has gone. So you, I have you do ten subtraction. Left. Do you understand? So I can tell. Because the thing is, when because when I'm working and I need to pick stuff from the showroom, I think, okay, I have this, I have this, I have this. And I carry the picture of the showroom everywhere I go. So I can close my eyes and tell you, um, this and the, the mirror is here, this is this, this. And the same way, I apply it to my client's space. Once I enter your space once, I'll describe your house better than you do. <laughs> wow. So uh, another thing I'm also deriving from our conversation now is that to succeed in this business, uh, attention to detail is very ah, crucial. That's, it's one of the, cru as in the most crucial thing, because you need um, you need all the details because they're going to work for you eventually. Like how, okay, I, I go to a house now and I'll forget that there's a step up somewhere and it's going to affect my design. So by the time you now get it, oh, I didn't remember there was a step up. You've already, you know, it doesn't give people confidence in you. Like, ah, what's wrong? How can you not remember? You know, you have to. Now, uh, let, let, let's quickly go to the competition because, I mean, you, you know you're not alone in the business. Tell us what the competition is like in this industry. I'm not in competition. <laughs> That's a joke. But really, <laughs> in a way, <laughs> in a way, I look at it like, uh, Am I really competing? Especially in this badon, because the the way I do my work is different. Oh, 
I, I like the way you stretch it. The way I do my work is different too. <laughs> Confident. I don't I don't work like any other person. So when people walk into my space, the space yeah. I've done, they can tell that this is Glory's work. I remember a friend of mine that came from UK mm. and went to one restaurant and I, I did and said, Glory did this place. For kind of loud. He has been in the UK for like three, four years. Yeah. And yet, you know. He still so, remembers. He just knows my feel. But that's branding actually. Yeah. Consistency. You know, he just knows my feel. So, um, but competition, well, they're there, you know, some people, especially <laughs> when they don't know. Yeah. They just think, ah, okay, ah, should be it's the same thing. Let's go and talk to this person. But what I'm trying to, um, to do right now is um, to create a kind of system whereby even my competition are my clients. So if How would that work? eventually I don't get the job, the money still comes to me one way or the other. So I'm trying to build that now and then I'm really working on it and we are already getting results in that regard. Coming up. Uh, what suggestions would you give a startup in terms of the options available to enter into the industry or to enter into the sector? Let's talk about customer loyalty. I mean, we know that you have all these wonderful variables that have helped you to secure businesses. Um, but sustainability is key to business growth. What are your strategies to ensure customer loyalty? I mean, because repeat patronage is what expands your business space. I, I am blessed <laughs> when it comes to customer loyalty. I am indeed blessed. And then, um, for me, I think one of the factor is the a relational ability to, because beyond the business, I I tell people that I'm a solution. I'm a solution giver. Everywhere I go, I give. I make solution happen. I make things happen, and people hardly forget people who make things happen for them. So once I leave myself in that space, you would always come back. And how do I leave myself? And it's been working. Yeah, it's been working. And then how do you leave yourself? Yeah, how do I leave myself? Okay, it's I've I've done spaces for people that have helped them to serve them solve their marital issue. <laughs> That's very funny, you know. I've um, done spaces for people that have helped them with um, their children. I remember one house I did long time ago. And this woman had um, one very restless child. And then she kept, ah, this is because of this child, I don't want to do this. I don't want to um, redo my house and all of that. And then he keeps saying, when I put this here, you go and touch it. And I said, okay, what do we do? And I want to do my house. My friends will come and they will complain. And I said, okay, no problem. Let's go to your house. When will you come back from school? He told me, um, she told me, and then we went to the house. By the time we came, I saw the child. And I called him, I said, come. We want to do your space, we want to do your house. Do you like, which of your friend's house do you like the most? And he just went, ah, this and this, this. Eh, our house is not fine. I said, okay, you know why your house is not fine? Your mommy has always wanted to do this house, but because of you. And we just go very cold. He said, your mommy said, if she does this, you would break it. By the time we finished talking with the child and all of that, he now said, auntie, I promise. I promise I won't spoil it. I won't do this. I, and at the end of the day, we had verses on the table and they survived. So, so, so you, you're not just even talking about skills of doing this job, but also because what you just did there is uh, coaching. You're using NLP strategies. Yeah, because I believe children can be talked to. They understand. If you speak to them, they understand. They want good things around them. They, so even if at the end of the day, that child breaks a thing, he will feel bad. He won't just do it out of, oh, I'm happy I did it. He will feel bad that, and you see him trying to explain, oh, I didn't do it intentionally and all of that. Child, children listen if you talk to them in the way they understand. So, 
You've been doing this for 13 years and you've told us your strategies and your experiences. Now let's, 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 let's slice off a little bit of our time to speak to the people at home, especially those who may have been inspired by the narratives you've given us so far. Um, if I want to venture into this sector, you've told us your own entry point. You met someone who was into bed sheets and duvets and from there you took it up to the next level and next level until you got to where you are now. Uh, but I want to assume that that's just one out of several entry points. From your experience and with your observation about how the industry plays out or pans out, uh, what suggestions would you give a startup in terms of the options available to enter into the industry or to enter into the sector? Okay, well, right now, what I advise people, because like you said, my, my case is rare. I would advise that um, you go for training. Okay, like abroad, you have to do like um, four, two years courses, six months and all that. You, you need to go for training. If you cannot afford the training, another easy way that I tell people is that understudy people, learn to work for free. You might just find someone you can understudy. I'm telling you, if you find somebody you can understudy, and don't because you are understudying somebody, you put in little effort. Put in all your efforts. Serve as if you are getting paid for it. No matter what, even if you don't get rewarded, I'm sure that even God will reward you for it. So, and I've seen people who have done a lot of stuff like that, who worked for free and then they've been greatly rewarded for it. But right now, everybody wants immediate gratification. You want to make money like. You want to be boss. You know, you want to be boss like. So, we need to learn to serve. So if you can't afford training, go for um, work for free with somebody who is into what you want to do. Sort. Yeah, or you, as in, that's the best way. And so understanding people is the best way to learn. Not even, not even in class, not even going to, training is good. If you have all the theory and then when you understand the people, you, you, get, you get much more than the, the skill. You get the heart of the job. Because every job has its own heart. They have, so every job has its life, has its heart. So if you don't get that, you just, that's why you see some people, they just start because there's money in it. They start. And then at the end of the day, you just they, do that they, they time get and then they get bored. I don't want to do this thing. Because there were, challenges will always come in business. So when that, time ha when that time comes, what do you do? If you're not passionate about it, if you do not have the heart of the business, you'll be out of it before you know it. You started with zero naira, as it were, because you were taking products from someone, like you said, um, I, I want to remember the phrase you used now. Handbag uh, business. Handbag business. Um, can that still be replicated in today's time? Because that was uh, some oh, 17, sure. 18 years ago. Sure, it, it still can. You can because, still collect products from people yeah. and take it around. You know, you know, when I see young people, well, I'm still young, I <laughs> shouldn't be easy. When I see people come and they say, oh, I don't have money, I don't, start there's no dignity in begging start for Christ's sake. Capital. You know, oh, I, I, I really don't, I'm sorry, I really don't like it when they say, I don't have capital. When, in fact, you don't even know how much you need. You know, true, true. so I really don't like it. I don't like hearing those things. Have you spoken to somebody doing that already? You want to do makeup, for instance. Have you been to a makeup artist? Okay, uh, can I be holding brushes for you? Mm. Or can I help you to sell your powder? Or, you know, something. Like right now, if somebody comes here and say, okay, um, I can help you to market. And I would, because I started like that. I'm looking forward to having people like that, but people, young people of nowadays don't want to do that. They want to win lottery. They want to win uh, good ultimate search. Yeah, uh, and um, big MTN, brother. big brother yeah, money. I mean, which is not a bad thing. It's not say, a bad thing. But, but not everybody's going to win it. There can only be one winner. Before you know it, it. you, I don't you know you have waited white. for 30 years <laughs> and you have still not won. So, but you talked about challenges. Uh, we, we need to also touch on that area. In specific terms, what are the challenges that one should expect? The, I'm sorry to use this word, the Nigeria challenges. <laughs> the number one thing, because you have to be your own local government. What I mean by being your own local government, you provide everything you need. Yeah. If there's no road leading to your office, you have to create one. You have to um, provide water, provide um, your own electricity, provide, you know, that's a major thing because mm. it really, it, um, 
You what, tell what are the other challenges? I also know you will talk about problems with artisans, but in your own experience, you were having those problems initially and through a process of affirmation and also substitution, elimination, you were juggling along the way. After 13 years, you've been able to have a stable, reliable, dependable team. Yeah. So people should be patient, you yeah, know, as it were. Yeah, patience is another thing. That. And then you have to keep trying. You know, when you use somebody and it doesn't work, use another person, give people a chance. And also give people a chance to make mistakes. I remember, um, I've had some painters, a lot of my painters, I, 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 I trained them how to paint very well. My painters can paint without covering anything and there won't be a stain of paint. You because you've so, trained them over time. Yeah, over time. So and some of them were lousy painters when they came. You know, they were paint all over the place, all over. They would paint, um, paint the socket, and I'll tell them, I'm not paying you to pay, paint mm. the socket. You know, like that. But they grew and got better. I have painters of over eight years. I have them. Um, people have worked for me for a very long time. So you have to be patient also. Give people a chance. Learn to give people a chance. If they make mistake once, you make mistake also, and you give your, you don't beat yourself up. So that's another thing. Be patient with people. Do you, eventually they will give you the best. So the challenge of poor personnel can be overcome yes. with patience, with training. Yeah, with and then motivate. Shopping, have a free hand. Incentives. You know, every time that when you make money, let them know that you made money. What are the niche options in this industry? Because we know that niche marketing is the in thing now. Um, interior decoration space management what are the niche options available uh, in the industry at the moment okay if I get you right I think um, for me you can decide to just um, face an aspect is that it yes like okay you can decide to do soft furnishing and say okay this is all I want to do there's a place on VR all they sell is tropilos six cents no, 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 not six cents. They do general. They, you know, it depends. You can decide, okay, all I want to do is I want to make blinds or I want to make curtains or I just want to sell furniture and all that. So you have to know your strength. I can do projects. It's not everybody that can do projects because some people are not even called for the field. Yes. So if you just want to have a showroom, you can just have a showroom, sell aesthetics and all that so but there are different things you can um you can work soft on. furnishing yes. projects where you go to sites. yes exactly or have a showroom where you or just have display a showroom stuff. where you just display stuff or even painting you can do a lot with painting you can do flooring you can i have somebody all he does is flooring all kinds of flooring solutions